And now we are going to have Mei Wong, the executive director of the Omega Foundation, and she's going to talk about the Smart Saver and the counter learning bond. Thank you. So I'm with the Smart Saver program. Um, my foundation is the Omega Foundation. We're located in Toronto. We've been around for about 25 years, and our, our roots are in microfinance. Started off in international microfinance, did a lot of microfinance work here in Canada as well. Um, uh, started off in micro lending, but more recently started, as many microfinance institutions have done across around the world, uh, really looking at the needs of low, lower income households to have uh, safe and affordable ways to save. Believe it or not, it's you know saving is actually what low income households are craving the most. Not not more loans, but but more ways to save. So that's that's one of the things that drew us to looking at savings options and. We were really, we started looking at RESPs because we came across statistics a number of years ago that showed this huge disparity in the use of RESPs, registered education savings, that really they were a vehicle, even though they're a public program, they were a vehicle that was widely accessed by uh, more affluent families and of almost no use to low income families. And not only that, but then you have all the matching grants so that you have all these grants that were going to more affluent families and very little to low income families. And that, that really you know, made us stop and think, we must be able to do something here. Our mandate is to help uh, low income households in Canada connect to the financial tools that help them to become more financially stable. And there is no better place to start then with the, the money that is currently available to all families, especially those low-income families. So I'm going to talk to you about um, registered education savings and in particular the Canada Learning Bond. So just in a nutshell, just as a quick review, RESPs or registered education savings are just the tax shelter saving vehicle itself. It's a kind of account that's registered with the government. And that uh, protects the whatever is in it, any growth that is in that account from being taxed. Um, the Canada Learning Bond is a standalone deposit that's only available to children who were born 2004 or after. So the oldest ones are only turning 11 this year, whose net family income is $45,000 or less. It's, it's, kind of, it's considered a low income program. And it's true that, you know, I mean, for, for many families, low income, the net family income of 45,000 or less is, is definitely at a struggling level. However, I, I know in my home community of Toronto, we consider net family income of 45,000 kind of average. I mean, that, that, that encompasses a lot of people who are not, what you typically would classify as, you know, like socially assistance, social assistance dependent, or you know, on you know, disability or anything like that. But in Toronto, for instance, we're talking about basically anyone who's an artist, uh, anyone who's still a student who has children. I mean, a lot of people who are working at minimum wage um, are under that level. So, even though it's a low, you know, we consider that a low income threshold, it's the lowest tax bracket basically. It encompasses more people than you think. And then there's the Canada Education Savings Grant, which is the matching grant component. It's available to any family that starts an RESP. Everybody gets a basic 20% match on whatever contributions they put in. It is tied to the family contributing. The learning bond is not dependent on any contributions. But at a low income level, the match is increased. So at the same income level that makes a family eligible for this, the match is actually 40%, not 20. Now the great thing about the Canada Learning Bond is the fact that it can basically be the kickstart contribution to an RESP for a low income family for that child born 2004 or later. And it starts this whole lovely cycle that, that uh, builds capacity in two generations, both the parents and the children. And what we see is that in the first 10 years of the history of the Learning Bond, it was introduced in 2004 that it's working exactly according to plan and seeding all of this wonderful capacity. So being the first contribution, a family can open an account with nothing. There's the, you know, the accounts are free at a lot of financial institutions and there's no minimum contribution required. And they apply for the bond. If they're eligible, the bond is deposited into the account. 
Now, by opening the account, it does a couple of things. One, now that the RESP is open, it can attract the bond. It can also attract provincial incentives where those are available, and they're available in a number of provinces, not here yet. Um, and it's also enough to motivate most families to start kicking in contributions of their own. Believe it or not, 97% of accounts that have been started with the Can Learning Bond are receiving family contributions, even though no family contributions are required. And then those contributions that they make then trigger matching dollars, federal match, Canada Education Savings Grant, and there are some provincial matching programs as well, not in Manitoba yet. As the family's investment in the fund starts to grow, what we always encourage parents to do is talk to their kids about it. The fact that they've started the account and that they're starting to kick money in. And what we find, and it's bear, borne out in the research as well, when kids know that their families are contributing, it has this great effect on them. It makes them feel more confident about their education futures and makes them more committed to their schooling. And again, going around the cycle, and this is all in the research, kids start feeling like they might have the opportunity to go on to pursue their education. They start focusing more and work harder at their schoolwork. With a little bit of savings, they have a higher likelihood of graduating from high school. With a little bit of savings, they have a significantly increased likelihood of putting in an application for post-secondary. It's very important. And with some savings, they have a many times higher likelihood of graduating from post-secondary. The reason I said it was really important that they got to that point of putting in an application is because that's where the research shows is the great big gap. The get big gap is who puts in an application and who doesn't. And a lot of times, we might think that at grade 12, it would be a great thing to encourage kids to put in an application, but that's not going to help if a kid checked themselves out of it at grade, it, when they were 11 or 12, thinking that they didn't have the chance or the possibility of going on. In fact, the research shows that kids as young as 11 years old will actually think to themselves, is it financially feasible for me to continue my education? And depending on what they determine, as uninformed as that might be, that will alter the effort that they put into their schoolwork. So it's just more evidence of the importance of really starting to seed that with kids when they're young. Savings, as one dad said to us, savings change a kid's question from should I go to what should I study. It's really, it's opening up the sense of possibility. And that is, as Clint was talking about, just about all parents want their kids, you know, to continue their education. All the studies in Canada reflect that as well. It's vastly over 90%. Of, of parents, and, and for the most part, they want their kids to attend university, even though we see a big income disparity in who goes to university. But parents are already there. What seeding the education savings with the Canada Learning Bond does is it allows a lot of lower income parents to sort of put money where their mouth is. You know, one mom said to me in Toronto, she said, she showed, as soon as she got the learning bond, she showed that statement to her son, who was only like 10 or 11 years old. And she said, do you see this account? I started this account just for your studies. So you better study, you know? I mean, there's no better pressure than that on a kid, right? <laughs> but none of that, the motivation, the money, none of that is important if kids don't get an RESP. And most kids that are eligible for the learning bond to start their RESP don't have it. Um, in fact, I, I believe here in Manitoba, it's only one, for every one child who's eligible who has their learning bond, there's four that don't, okay? So you're looking at about 20% take up here. What, across the country, 1.4 million children who are eligible who don't have it, it's about 84,000 of them here in Manitoba. Um, and we know something about them, right, these kids. We, we know, for instance, that a lot of their parents um, just, they don't have any financial experience at all. 
They don't know anything about financial products. Their banking experience is very limited. So they're, they're a little bit apprehensive about engaging with banking institutions. Um, we know that a lot of their parents are you know, barely out of school age themselves. And we know that a lot of them are struggling to raise a family as a single parent. Uh, and we know that a lot of them live right in this area. They don't know about the learning bond. Awareness is very low. They don't know about the learning bond. They don't know that their children are eligible for it. And even if they did know that, they wouldn't know how to get it. And that's this environment uh, in which we entered this exploration. And that's why our foundation started the Smart Saver program. With the Smart Saver program, what we've tried to do is develop a set of tools that can help anybody to help a family to get their bond and help families get it for themselves. Smart Saver was created as a platform for community action to uh, promote enrollment. We started it as a pilot in Toronto, and we, we chose Toronto for a number of reasons. One is that's our headquarter. Um, but another reason is because we thought the city of Toronto is about as diverse and messed up as you can get. Um, if you want to hit problems, if you want to hit a lot of different kinds of communities, each with their own unique set of problems, we would probably encounter them in Toronto. So we would be able to uh, see what the sort of the more prevalent stumbling blocks and barriers were with Canada Learning Bond Enrollment. So over a course of three years, we ran a pilot in Toronto and, uh, and we piloted a, a way of educating both frontline workers and community agencies and parents themselves on what the learning bond is, what RESPs are, how to get it. And, and we did learn a huge amount in that process. Along the way, we were overwhelmed with the number of agencies that wanted to get involved with us. It was over a thousand different community agencies. And again, just like Clint's experience, every kind of agency that serves the community want, saw this as being central to their mission. From settlement organizations and housing providers to schools and daycares and churches, you name it, everybody saw seeding those savings for children as being central to a part of their mission. But we have all of our tools. Our, our, our website is smartsaver.org. We encourage all communities that we work with, and we work with communities across the country now, uh, to take those tools, make them your own. Adopt them, adapt them, rebrand them, use them as your own. Um, we consider it open source. Our only mission is to improve take up. So over on the right hand side, you'll see a couple of samples of the kinds of tools that we have available from video and so to, and, and, uh, and animations on you know, how to's to quick reference charts and, and tools for frontline service providers. Our website, our educational website is available in 16 different languages. And the communities that use it are just as diverse. Now on the left hand side, this is a screenshot of one page of a new online application that we've recently introduced just in the last few months. This is the look and feel of it. And basically what this is, is it's an opportunity for families to begin the application process for the Canada Learning Bond online. We introduced this for a couple of reasons. One is to make it a lot um, more user friendly to start that application. So we take the federal form for the Canada Learning Bond application and we have translated it into a visually and multilingually supported application interface. That information is collected online and securely and instantly transmitted to the financial institution that an applicant chooses to work with. The other reason that we did this is because it takes the sting out of that initial um, encounter that the applicant has with the financial institution. During the pilot, what we learned is that as, as far as we could go was with the educational work or the community agencies could go, the parent had to go to the financial institution on their own and say, I would like the learning bond. And a lot of times, because awareness is so low of the learning bond, the financial institution wasn't any more aware of what that was than the parent was. 
So they would say, well, I'm, did you mean the Canada Savings Bond? And, you know, or, or maybe you don't get it here. Maybe you have to go to the government to get that. A lot of times people were asked this awkward question of how much do you want to start your account with when we had you know, made sure that they understood that they could start an account with zero. So to take all of that messiness out of it, we started the online application and we lined up a number of financial institution partners to support it. And the agreement is that when an application comes through the portal, that the financial institution understands that what that parent wants is an RESP with no fees attached and no minimum contribution requirement. It truly is free money. The application is then submitted to the federal government so that the bond can be deposited in there. It doesn't preclude a parent from making contributions. In fact, we know 97% of parents are going to turn around and make contributions, but it's not going to require any contributions in order to access their right, which is the bond. So right now, there are six financial institutions that are supporting the application. Four of the major banks, RBC Royal Bank, TD Canada Trust, BMO, and Scotia. Can CIBC is still in the works, but we think that they'll be probably on in the next couple of months. In Ontario, our largest credit union, Meridian, and in BC, Van City. So when the application comes through, it is instantly transmitted to them. They receive it, uh, contact the client, and uh, set up a time when the client can come in and sign the paperwork so that the application can be completed. There is a personal interface. Um, because identification has to be verified, uh, the papers have to be signed in order to be submitted to government, but also because we think that's really important. As part of that financial literacy and financial engagement component to this whole process, we think it's important that there be some relationship building there because it really is their relationship, not ours. So I'm going to show you just a really brief video um, to show you, you know, we're talking about 1.4 million, we're talking about 84,000 in Manitoba, but, but one family at a time. This is really worth making sure that, that families know about this. My name is Jess. I'm from St. Catharines, Ontario. I'm 28. I have three children. They're seven, five, and three. I'm a mom. I'm, I'm a working mom. Typical day is extremely busy. It's exhausting, but it's so fun. Like college for three kids, it's such an overwhelming number that on one income, you don't even think about it. You just hope for the best. <laughs> I had never heard of the Canada Learning Bond. I didn't know that grants or bonds existed with the government. I didn't know that they even had that available. $2,000? Uh, yeah, that definitely sounds like something too good to be true. I think the Canada Learning Bond provides a great opportunity for really helping children understand and their families understand that you're not in it alone. That Canada as a whole is investing in their education, in see savings as a way of helping finance college, right? That this whole idea of a meta message, we say we go to college, and then it's not about the amount of money they're saving, but it's about the psychological effects. It's about creating this engagement. This is a commitment that the federal government has made, that they're putting money towards, and the fact that we can participate in something and leverage federal dollars to increase total savings is transformative, and more importantly, the ability to help low-income families save for their children and enable children to attend post-secondary education is a game-changer. When I think of banking, because it's me, it's me and my situation, I think of paychecks and bills. I've never experienced anything to do with saving or anything like that. I think creating a warm introduction between the bank representative 
and uh, the applicant family is really crucial to this component. It starts off as a savings relationship through the RESP, but also it's one that can grow as people begin to see a shared commitment to their savings journey. Uh, children who have, and even low and moderate income children who have accounts, are about four times more likely to uh, graduate from college than if they did not have accounts. Right? And so this is really important because it, it, it once again speaks to the ability of savings accounts to kind of narrow the gap. The application process is probably the easiest online form I've ever filled out. I mean, I've, I've done a million things. Everybody has, um, ordering things online. I made a Snapfish book for my mother for Christmas. It honestly took me two hours. This thing took me five minutes. The feeling I get from having this now is more of a sort of a sigh of relief because it's a start and everything starts somewhere. <laughs> By the way, Jessica, who is in the video, called us really excited when the money came in and got deposited into her new RESP. Her children had been eligible for a number of years, so um, she not only got the initial payment of the bond, but then she got all of the annual payments that they hadn't accessed yet because it's retroactive. Um, so she was really excited and we were also really ecstatic that she got it in such a short time. It was like 18 days from the time that she put in the application until the money appeared in her account. She checked it every day to make sure it came in. Um, so. In closing, I just want to say that yes, the the Canada Learning Bond is free money, and it's you know it's it's up to two thousand dollars per child for for programs like Clint's program and so many of the American programs that have really been organizing and mobilizing around children's savings. It's hard for us sometimes to put that in perspective, but in, in an international scale, really the Learning Bond is a unique gem. There is nothing like it in the world, and certainly nothing like it at the size that it is. So, you know, the fact that there are so many children who haven't received it yet, when the federal government is just waiting to cut those checks, I mean, I, I find that, you know, I, I just can't wait to get money into every single one of these accounts. So, uh, I really encourage you guys to be thinking about what can be done for the children here in terms of just making sure everybody gets this money. Um, and we really look forward to, uh, to supporting your efforts at SmartSaver. And just one last thing, it's been kind of bugging me since last night. Clint told the story of how his son wants to follow in his footsteps and work at the Y, which you don't know how lucky you are, guy. I mean, like seriously, I, uh, it made me think about my daughter who was sitting at the dinner table with me a couple of years ago. And, she asked me how work was going and I told her and she, she looked at me with a big smile and she said, you know, Mom, I love hearing about the work that you do. I would just hate to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? So, <laughs> yeah, all right. Anyways, the thing is, I feel like I've got the best job in the world and I can't wait for you guys to get started because all you need is one experience of a parent who comes up to you and says, you know what? I got this money for my kid, and you'll know what it was all worth. Thanks. <laughs>